Hi, I'm Dr. Doug Vaughn, world-famous bariatric surgeon, author of 13 books with a couple more on the way. And we're here to talk about the six most common pitfalls after weight loss surgery. But even if you haven't had weight loss surgery, or you're trying to avoid weight loss surgery, or you're just trying to uh, um, lose some weight, these six tips for you to avoid is going to still help you too, right? All right, so let's get started. I want to... Scratch my nose. Oh my gosh. Oh, I gotta start over. Just kidding. So let's get started with tip number one. I'm gonna do all six really fast in order. All right. So what do you guys think? You what do you what do you think they're gonna be? Go ahead and put some comments as you're watching this video. So we'll see how right you are. Okay. Pitfall number one. I haven't seen anyone mention this yet, but it's true. Chase restriction. This will equal WLS failure. I guarantee you 110%. Now these are the most common pitfalls I see, which means what? That means this is tri tried and true, man. Like Because if so many people are complaining about it, I, these six common things I know are a real problem. The number one, or the first pitfall is that you chase restriction. See, here's what happens. When you have weight loss surgery, you, you initially your sleeve or your bypass or whatever is really tight and you can't eat very much right so you're like two or three bites and you're like oh my god I'm stuffed it's I love my sleeve baby I love my sleeve but that doesn't last forever right and most likely if you, a lot of you guys from your program heard oh you can eat whatever you want just in small amounts and, 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 and it'll make you feel full faster and, and you'll lose weight real easy and so what happens is in the patient's mind you're always trying to find this restriction so put in the comments section chasing restriction will equal a weight loss surgery failure why does not last forever I promise you you can stretch out your surgery 110% stretch out surgery. I guarantee you. And yes, you can stretch out your sleeve stretches. They all stretch. All uh, surgeries will lose their restriction eventually. If you have the duodenal switch, you don't want restriction. You actually want to be able to eat a lot of food with the duodenal switch because of the malabsorption. But a sleeve will stretch. And I, I get into this argument with other surgeons because they'll say, well, you know, weight loss, the sleeve is uh, permanent weight loss, right? Or it's, um, you can't reverse it. And I'll go, you can reverse the sleeve. Oh, yes, doctor, you can reverse the sleeve. And they're like, Dr. Vong, you're crazy. You, I mean, I've removed 75% of the stomach. Like, that's permanent. You know, I was like, nope. Because what can happen is you reverse the sleeve by stretching it out. And I've seen videos and have discussed it with other surgeons where the, so much of the stomach has re-stretched out, looks like almost a normal stomach, at least a normal size, normal capacity. It, you've lost all your restrictions. So the sleeve will definitely stretch back to, could stretch back to normal size. Um, I talk about this in my weight regain course, by the way. And the gastric bypass also stretches. But... It's not the pouch. Rarely it's the pouch. Sometimes it can be the pouch. Usually it's the jejunum. It's where your small intestine connects to your pouch. Usually your, your um, connection stretches. I go into more detail in my weight regain course on this stuff because it's kind of complicated. But um, all your surgeries will stretch out. Your lap band, if you've had a lap band, your esophagus stretched out. And that's how you lose your restriction right so adding more and more fluid into a lap band will not make it make you regain this restriction okay now once you lose the restriction this is tricky too you cannot cannot get it back get it back without surgery 
So stop doing these five-day pouch tests, all this st stupid stuff. You got to go see your surgeon. And even if you have another surgery to repair it, revise it, fix it, whatever, that feeling of restriction, it's like losing your virginity. It will not feel... <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. It will not feel the same like the first time you had it. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like sex. It just won't feel like the first time again, man. Trust me. So a lot of people, what they do is they want their lap band revised or they want their sleeve revised. And they're surprised because afterwards, they're just it just doesn't feel the same. It doesn't feel as tight, right? And lots of reasons for that, too. That's multifactorial. But... So what you don't want to do is chase restriction. Do not chase restriction. So do not, do not, not eat until restriction. You want to not eat till you're full. You do not want to eat until the surgery makes you stop. Do not do that. That's how you stretch out your surgery. And once you have that restriction, some of you fuckers, I, my first F bomb. That's good. Some of you guys will eat and you'll feel tight. You'll feel like full, like I'm done, right? And then you don't get rid of the food. And you're sitting there and you're talking and you're on a date or you're at a social setting. And next thing you know, you're, you reach out and you take another bite. And the first time you do that, you go, ooh. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. And then you're walking around, your hands above your head like this. Like, oh my god, oh my god. Right? But once it passes, you go, oh, I'm never going to do that again. But guess what? Yeah, do it again. Maybe months later, but you'll do it again. But that second, that third, that fourth, that fifth time you overeat or eat to restriction, you notice like that fifth time you're like, oh, that wasn't bad. Like, ow, ow. Oh, 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 it's better now. It went away. It didn't last nearly as long, huh? Yeah? And then one day you take one bite too much and you go, oh, where, what happened to my restriction? It's gone. It's gone. Now, some of you guys are wondering, Dr. Vong, how long does this take? Trust me, it's months. Months to years. It's usually around the year and a half, two year mark. So... But what happens is it's so slow. And it could be sooner, man. Trust me. I've had people say that they can eat as much as they want six months out. But most people, it's going to be about a year and a half, two years. And that's when the weight regain starts happening. Weight regain, right? It's usually around that time period. Um, now, why is it different for different people? It just is. It just is. And if you are three years out, four years out, and you still have a lot of restriction, you can only eat a small amount of food, dude, don't bitch. Do not complain. It might not stay like that forever. Trust me. I know people who've had a bypass who kept all their weight off, normal size, for eight years and then regained it after like eight, nine, ten years out because they don't, they're not practicing what I teach, you know, what I teach. They never got this experience, you know, this lesson. All right. So number one thing, do not chase restriction. That's a pitfall. Don't fall in love with restriction. Don't fall in love with the restriction. Okay. Number two, what do you think about number two? What's it going to be? This is a trap. It's a pitfall. You guys don't appreciate the honeymoon period enough this is a trap you guys don't appreciate it enough amen come on now when you what's the honeymoon period dr vaughn well it's that period you know like right after you get married you just had your surgery it could be the first six months it could be a year it could last it could last for two years but while you're in the honeymoon period you better fucking appreciate it you better like oh i love my surgery i love my bypass i love my sleeve i'm so excited to have a, a surgery i'm so excited the weight loss is great and then you have to get disciplined right like during the honeymoon period get used to like just taking small bites eating slowly not not swallowing not during the honeymoon period you gotta this is the mind games part you have to work on the mind games 
But what happens is it's so easy. The honeymoon period, the weight loss is just melting off. You're full really fast. You, um, you, uh, the, you, the, you're shrinking in clothes and you're going shopping and maybe you got rid of your deadbeat husband. Maybe you're dating some guy who just got a brand new tattoo and a Harley and you're just, oh, and you're out there living this life. And, you know, I'm finally living my life, Dr. V, Dr. V. I'm like, no, 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 time out. No, 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 honeymoon period. I get it. You're excited. But you got to work on your mind games part. And you know what all you guys tell me? Oh, Dr. Vaughn, no, I'm good. I've, I've been working on myself. I've been, really? What was the last self-help book that you read? Oh, what self-help book? Like, what, why would I do that? That's how you work on the mind game stuff, right? And I see you posting on Facebook. You're, you're dating guys. You're out partying. You're t- cheering with the girls, you know? I'm like, dude, don't waste this opportunity. The honeymoon period does not last forever. Does not last forever, just like every marriage. Some people swear they never had a honeymoon period, man. Some people will be like, dude, I woke up and I could eat a hamburger if I wanted to. I, I could, I never had anything, you know, and, and uh, every pound I lost was hard. Some people, I wake up and like nine months later and they're like, whoop, a size six. I'm like, wow, what happened to you? I just did what you told me, Dr. V. Okay. But during this honeymoon period, you need to focus on the mind games, the emotional stuff. So this is focus on you. Focus on you, not the weight loss. Because we are always focusing on the weight loss. Oh, man, I lost 10 more pounds. I lost blah, blah, blah. I'm in a size. I went from a size 22 to a size 16 and blah, blah, blah. No, no, I get it. You're excited. But I want to see y'all start celebrating like stuff that you've been doing. You know what I mean? Like, yay, I've seen my therapist like every single week for two months now. Way to go. I'm really working on my mind stuff, you know? Yay, I really had that hard conversation with my son who's addicted to drugs and kicked his sorry ass out of my house. That's the stuff during this period when losing weight's easy, you need to work on, okay? Now, that goes back to chasing restriction. Once the honeymoon period is over, guess what? It's over. That ship is gone. You ain't going to get it back. You're not going to get it back. There is no pouch reset. There is no do-over. And here's the key. You don't know how long it will last. You just don't know how long it's going to last. That's just the truth of the matter, you know? And surgeons can't predict it. No, the surgeon didn't do the surgery wrong, most likely. It's just your own physiology, your own biochemistry, and your own baggage, your own headspace. How hard did you work pre-op? What's your support you have at home? What's your environment like at home? That all ties into, um, you know, honeymoon period. I'll give you an example. I have a personal example, right? One of, I had a patient who woke up. And she swore, she, beautiful skinny sleeve, perfect, just like any other sleeve. She's like, I don't have any restriction. I can eat whatever I want, blah, blah, blah. But guess what happened? She had surgery and went right back to like her stressful job, went right back to traveling. Oh my gosh, I've got to sneeze, sorry. She went right back to like traveling on the road and, and, and doing all this stuff and getting stressed out again. And, and she never had time to work on this part. It wasn't until a, like a year and a half later when she finally sat down and was like, okay, I, I got I to gotta figure out my finances. Yes, I got to figure out. Um, finally got rid of the new boyfriend. I told do not get the new boyfriend. Oh, no, he's a good guy. No, he's not. You know, got rid of the new boyfriend. And, and, you know, now she's looking good. But at some point, it's just never, the honeymoon is never going to come back. Okay? It's gone. So the mistake, one of the traps that y'all make is you don't appreciate the honeymoon period enough when you're in it. True? Comment if that's true. Tip number three. Now, this is a very common pitfall. A very common pitfall. Snacking. 
If you want your honeymoon period to end fast, start snacking. Start snacking. But Dr. Vong, my program told me to eat, you know, a small a small meal every four or five hours. Well, I understand. Maybe that's what your program told you. But is it possible that they're wrong? Right? What's the point of snacking? Right? But Dr. Vong, uh it, how, if I don't snack, how do I get in enough protein? What if your program's wrong about how much protein you need? If you have a sleeve, you don't need that much protein. You probably only need, you know, for a woman, maybe 40 grams a day. As a man, 50 gra grams a day. And these programs are telling sleeve patients and bypass patients to eat 80, 90, 100 grams. Put in the comment section, how many grams a day did your program tell, a protein did your program tell you to eat? So then what happens is maybe that information they gave you, the basis, the foundation is wrong. You don't need to snack, okay? And let me give you a couple of reasons. What is healthy about fucking string cheese? Processed food? Nada, nothing. Somebody was eating protein chips. I wish I had come up with protein chips. Holy hell, I would be retired. <laughs> oh, I am retired. I would be retired to an island. What is healthy about protein chips? What is healthy about drinking protein shakes? Nada. They're processed food products, right? So first of all, you're not even snacking on healthy things, most of y'all, right? Dr. Vaughn, what about a fruit? Isn't fruit healthy? Can't I snack on fruit? Think about this. Dr. Vaughn, I'm eating an apple, right? Here's an apple, Dr. Vaughn. It's apple. It's good. It's good. Oh, it's good. Yeah, I'm, I'm having my snack today. I'm having my snack at 2. I'm having my snack at 2. I'm having my apple. I'm having my egg whites at 10 in the morning. I'm having my egg whites. It's not long before something happens in your life. A divorce. You hurt yourself, your husband gets laid off, you have a car wreck, mom has cancer, grandma falls and breaks her hip. And those apple slices become apple with peanut butter because you're trying to get in more protein because now you're really tired and stressed out. So peanut butter has protein. My program says I could have peanut butter. It's apple with peanut butter slices, apple with peanut butter. And it's just a matter of time that that apple with peanut butter slices becomes an apple pie. It it's just is. And what's I gonna, oh, see, you're already in the snacking motion. Watch me now. You're in the snacking motion so that when something bad happens, like a car wreck or a job layoff or a cheating spouse, you can't, it's, you, you can't stop it. You're already in the motion. You can't stop it. It's like the Titanic. So now you're like, I need to reach for something. I need to bury my uh, emotions. I've got a, uh, you know, but, but my program tell me to eat every two or three hours, but I'm stressed out about this thing. And the motion's just too hard, right? So what I say is, you can't be trusted. Girl, you can't be trusted with a snack. You can't be trusted to make a healthy snack. Now, some of y'all might disagree with me. That's fine. You can totally disagree with me. But let me ask you this question. First of all, someone who's had to have weight loss surgery, chances are have demonstrated already that they do not make good food choices. Is that true? Come on now. You know that's true. I love y'all, but it's true. So if you're given the choice between you know, eating fast food or preparing a salad or your own dinner, you're most likely going to choose fast food. Most of the time. Sometimes you might make a salad because you're trying to be on a diet, but most of the time. If you're trying to choose between a healthy snack, like a piece of fruit, or a cookie because your blood sugars are low, you're probably going to choose a cookie. Most of the time. If you're going to cook, cook at home or eat out, most of the time you're going to eat out, right? So you've demonstrated that you, it's harder for you to make healthy food choices, right? So why the fuck are we telling patients, hey, not only, <laughs> I'm gonna really fuck with your brain. I'm gonna take away how much you can eat 
and I'm going to tell you to eat more often and, and challenge you to every time you eat more often, make healthier food choices. It makes no sense as a surgeon. It makes no sense. My method is like, dude, don't eat. Don't snack. No snacking. Another example would be like an alcoholic, because a lot of y'all would agree you're food addicts. Well, if you're a food addict, then what you have to do is limit your exposure to that food. Now, you can't go without eating. You'll eventually die, but that's a long time away. But you're not like an alcoholic, right? So an alcoholic, you don't go up to an alcoholic and be like, you know, Joe, you've been sober for six months now. You've done so good. Let's just go celebrate. You don't do that, right? So why do we do that to a food addict? Oh, you've been so good, Mary. Let's just go celebrate. Because that's society. But here's another point. You don't go up to an alcoholic and say, Hey, Jim, I hear the latest research says that a glass of red wine is healthy for you. And uh, so it's got this chemical called Reservatrol. No, it's right here. I Googled it. It's called Reservatrol, and uh, it's good for your heart. So now you should have a glass of wine because that's a healthy drink. Just like you had a healthy snack. You don't do that to someone who's recovering alcoholic, right? The latest Facebook post I saw, Jim, there, tequila is healthy for you. People who drink tequila live two years longer. I don't know. I saw some sort of post about tequila, right? It's really silly. You wouldn't tell that to an alcoholic, would you? No. There's no healthy drink for an alcoholic. So there's no healthy snack for someone who you know, honestly has had to have weight loss surgery. It's too, you guys are too extreme. Now in America, it's very easy to become 30, 40 pounds overweight. And if you're watching and all you need to, you know, you're only 30, 40 pounds overweight, you might disagree with me. Okay, fine. But if you keep going the way you're going, you're gaining weight every single year. So the way you're doing it is not working, right? So maybe we try my way. No snacking, right? There is no healthy snack. Because you can't be trusted with snacking. Now, you just have to like work this through your own head. Like I know I tell you I'm not giving you medical advice and to follow your surgeon's program and, and, and ask your surgeon for your, your doctor, your team. But if you sit down there and think about it, what I'm trying to tell you, and you rationalize in your head, you're like, ah, Dr. Vong has a good point. At least consider it for me, right? No snacking. I'm going to tell you, comment if you cut out snacking and it broke your weight loss stall. I almost guarantee you that was what was holding you back on a weight loss surgery plateau. If you've had a plateau and, and I told you to stop snacking, you stop snacking, I almost guarantee you it broke your stall. Comment. Is that true? Comment if that's true. Okay. So no snacking because you can't be trusted with snacking. Now. I promise you, snacking will end your honeymoon period a lot sooner. I promise you it will. Okay? And every time, because here's, think about this. There's a reason why I'm doing this order, right? Because every time you're eating, you're snacking, you're also doing what? What? Chasing restriction. Every time you're putting food into your pouch, into your bypass, in your head, my surgeon, my program promised me I'd have restriction. And you're just testing that restriction. That's how you stretch your surgery. You're going to get out of the honeymoon period a lot faster if you keep snacking. Now here's the next problem. That leads me to number four. One of the most common pitfalls that I see you guys do is exercise. And by exercise, I mean go to the gym, not walking. Walking is okay. Walking is okay. I get that question a lot. Is walking okay, Dr. Fong? Of course. Walking is not exercise. Oh my gosh. We're the only country that thinks walking is exercise. Walking is okay. Exercise too soon. That's the pitfall. We exercise too soon. We go back to the gym too soon. You guys are just fucking the shit up. Stop going to the gym right after surgery. Stop going back to the gym. The second my surgeon said I could go back to the gym, I went back. Don't do it. I, I go to the gym twice a day. No, don't do it. Don't do it. I'm going to explain why, okay? Exercise gym too soon. And I ask you, why are you trying to exercise? Well, I'm trying to lose weight, okay? 
Gym is not good for weight loss. You cannot burn off the calories of a bad diet. Weight loss is in the kitchen. Every trainer will tell you that. Gym is not good for weight loss. Did I say not to go to the gym? No, it's just not good for weight loss. I don't go to the gym. I hate the gym. I have my trainer come to me. But, so your objective is wrong. And as long as you're going to the gym for weight loss, it will not, it will not get to that objective and you'll get really frustrated. That's number one. But, Gym, now what do you have to do? So you, you start to get into this gym culture, right? There's a gym culture, a gym mentality. Okay? Now what happens in the gym mentality? Well, you got to lift more. You got to get personal best. You got to like really, are you serious? I mean, you got to go six days a week, right? You, you have this gym mentality. But eventually one of the things that y'all get into in the gym mentality is fucking protein. It's fucking eat more chicken. Chicken's not healthy for you, right? I eat more chicken. Pre-workout shakes. Post-workout. Shakes, supplements, snacks. What do all these do? All these do is putting you in f making the fucking food choice again. You're having to like make a food choice when if you didn't go to the gym, which is not good for weight loss anyway, you wouldn't have to be faced with making a post-workout snack choice. Because everybody's going to tell you, you got to do this. Now, why, do, why does the gym do this? Because they sell you the shakes at the gym. Your trainer sells you the shakes. Right? GNC makes money by doing this. But this stuff is for people, what? Bodybuilders or fitness people who are trying to do what? Bulk up. They're trying to gain weight. They do all this stuff to gain weight. Not to lose weight. Okay? So now you're making food choices. It's going to end your honeymoon period that every time you do, you're, going to, you're trying to chase restriction. That's one. That's another thing. Um, what happens after workout? It will increase what? I promise you it will increase your hunger. I guarantee you it will increase your hunger. Okay? which will drive you to snacking. Because your body, if you've worked out well, like with a trainer, and you've done cardio, or you've done heavy weights, if you're in the gym, you better be doing heavy weights, by the way. That's something else. But if you're expending all this energy, your body is going to drive your hunger up. Your brain will drive your hunger up to make up for that calorie deficit. Right? I promise you. So comment if you understand that, oh my God, he is right. Every time I go to the gym, I'm hungrier. I'm walking around. I'm looking for snacks. I'm looking for things, right? True? Now, why is this important? Because it leads me to number five. So number five is this. You have a pitfall is this belief. You'll never... No, hold on. I think some of y'all know what I'm already about to write. Some of y'all falsely believe I will never be hungry again. Comment if that's what you thought having weight loss surgery would do for you. Comment if your program or your surgeon said, hey, if you have weight loss surgery, if you have a bypass, it will really, you'll never be hungry again. It will really control your hunger. It, hey, the sleeve removes the ghrelin hormone and it really suppresses your hunger. You'll never be hungry again. You'll, you'll eat and you'll be full on a little bit of food. Comment if that's true. I'm going to tell you this right now. This is not fucking true. This is a huge pitfall. Yes, your hunger might be suppressed for a little bit. Yes, I know there are people that are three years out that still have to remind themselves to eat. Good for you. You're one of the lucky ones. For the average, for most of the people who have weight loss surgery, dude, their hunger comes back. Amen? I promise you their hunger comes back. And I'll, and I'll explain to you why in a second. Okay? 
Now, listen, everything in life is a bell curve. You guys know what a bell curve, right? There are people on each extreme. There are people, yes, there are people that are four or five years out that say, I'm never, I'm still not hungry. Uh, I still have to remind myself to eat. That's one end of the bell curve. The other end of the bell curve is up people who go, dude, doc, I woke up and I woke up hungry. I, I, I've always been hungry after surgery. Or my hunger restriction was only for like the first month or the first six months and then my hunger came back like mad. It's always a bell curve. But the average people, their hunger is going to come back around six months. But again, it depends on your mental side. It depends on what you're feeding your body. It depends on if you're going to the gym, right? Because I guarantee you the gym is going to do what? Drive up your hunger. And if your hunger comes back, what's it going to do to your honeymoon? Boom! It's going to end your honeymoon. Yes? You guys are going, Dr. V is fucking genius. This all makes sense. Now, I want you to write this in the comment section because it's super important. And you have to commit this to memory. All right? Here's what I teach my patients. It is natural to be hungry. It is unnatural to be full. One more time. It is natural to be hungry. It is unnatural to be full. See, when we were cavemen and cave women running around in our little fur bikini bottoms, because that's what Hollywood tells us, we were hungry most of the time. Why were we hungry most of the time? Do you know how hard it is to kill an antelope with your bare hands? I mean, these pictures of these cavemen eating a drum turkey drumstick. Have you ever tried to kill a turkey drumstick, a turkey with just a club? They run pretty fast. Most of the time, we were hungry, and the cavemen most of the time ate nuts and fruits and and berries, and they ate uh, grasses and and vegetables they could harvest, and they ate um, they ate a little bit of like uh, fish in the shallow waters that they they could catch and prawns and and. You know, they ate carcasses of dead animals. Um, so we were hungry most of the time. And it was very rare, if never, that we actually ate till we were full. But what's the problem? In today's time, people never want to be what? They never want to be hungry. And they always want to eat until what? Until they're full. And every diet promises you what? Hey, take my pill. Take my supplement. Sprinkle this powder on your food. It will keep you from feeling hungry and you'll get full faster. Remember that stuff? That's all the diets you've ever tried. Hydroxycut, Full Bar, any of those supplements. That's all they ever promised you. It will suppress your appetite, and, which, which is a fancy way of saying it will get rid of your hunger and it will make you feel full on less food. That's always the promise. And it never works. But that's what's happened in the weight loss surgery community. This is every pitch when you guys go to a weight loss surgeon's talk about bypass or sleeve or whatever, they always say something along those lines. It will suppress your hunger and it will make you feel full faster. Which I told you is the first thing you need to not believe. Do not chase restriction. Dr. Vong, if this is true, if everything you're saying makes sense, why do they do that? Why do they tell us that? Uh, they're trying to sell you on a surgery. A surgery is just another product. Yes, it will. Yes, it's the most effective product we have. I'm a surgeon. I, I love the shit, but I'm still trying to sell people. I'm, I'm retired now, but I was still trying to sell a surgery, right? A service, a product. And because of that, I'm telling you what you want to hear. I'm telling you what the data tells us, right? Weight loss surgery is the best chance for prolonged weight loss results. Weight loss surgery is the best for getting rid of high blood pressure, diabetes. It's all true, but it's not permanent. It will come back, right? Because your body is so redundant. Think about this. How important is it for your body to tell you, your brain to tell you, hey, I need nourishment. Think about this for a second. How important is that to your survival? I'm hungry. Go get food. Super duper important if you want to live, right? So if it's super important, how many checkpoints and redundant systems and feedback loops do you think your brain and body have? 
How many different hormones and chemicals? We've identified like 25 hunger or fullness hormones that are related. 25! Ghrelin is only one of 25. The system is so redundant because the drive for hunger, the hunger drive is what keeps you alive. Mmm. I don't think I've ever said it that way. But it's super important for you to understand. Do not be chasing hunger suppression. Do not be expecting your hunger to be gone forever. Do the mind work, the mind work during the honeymoon period that will get this hunger under, under control. And especially if you can learn that mantra, it's natural to be hungry. It's unnatural to be full. Now, last thing and I'll move on to the, our last tip. Okay. If you are trying to lose weight, which means you have to consume fewer calories. In order to consume fewer calories, you have to eat less food less often. If you're eating less food less often, what will your body naturally do? That's right, make you hungrier because that's its natural system, how it will work. So while you have good hunger suppression with whatever you're trying to do, and I don't care if it's surgery, Optifast, diet pills, as long as you have that hunger suppression, you've got to take that time and work on the headspace because it won't last forever. Is this helpful? Are you liking this? Is this making sense? And this is why number six is important, okay? The pitfall that people say, and it drives me nuts, is this. Such and such pounds, it's gone forever. Woohoo! Dr. V, 100 pounds, gone forever. The weight is gone. Weight is gone forever. No, it's not, bitch. No, 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 change this. It's not gone forever. No, no, it's gone for now. Now. My diabetes is gone forever. No, 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 your diabetes is gone for now. We're actually starting to study diabetes um, uh, coming back. Yes, after the sleeve, after the bypass, five years out, six years out, ten years out. Diabetes is coming back. Why? Because we're not teaching y'all the right things, the right things to eat. The mind games, the headspace, stop snacking. If you keep snacking, you're working your pancreas. You're going to make your diabetes comes back. If you keep snacking, it's just a matter of time before you start eating Cheetos again. That'll make your blood pressure come back. High blood pressure come back, right? Make sense? It's not gone forever, man. It's gone for now. For now. And so while it's gone for now, man, I better love my life. I better, where, where, where is it? The new me. I need to focus on me, focus on me, not the weight. I want y'all, Dr. V community, to start bitch slapping people whenever they post, yay, 100 pounds, gone forever. And you say, uh-uh, no, no, hashtag gone for now. Dr. V says, no, no, it's only gone for now. Because if you don't work at it, it will come back. Last point, even if you do work on it, it will come back. It is our natural state for most people to, re to gain weight as they get older. This is the heaviest I've been, some of the heaviest I've been, right? And I've been playing with the last five pounds here, just like y'all. But every year that I don't get this little pot belly off, it gets harder and harder. And I teach this shit for a living. But I'm telling you, this is a truth that the weight loss surgeons are glossing over. It is your natural state to gain weight as you get older. Why? Your metabolism decreases. You're less active. You lose muscle mass and you replace it with fat mass because of the things you're eating your food choices. So it's harder to lose weight and it's easier to gain weight. You can smell donuts and you'll gain a pound. Amen. 
that will all happen to every single one of you. So I want you to work backwards on this, right? I ordered this in this way for a reason. Stop saying it's gone forever. It's gone for now. When you say, oh, it's gone forever, you're making assumptions that your hunger will not return. You're making assumptions that you've got shit under control. And you might be walking in to a, a home where your husband says, oh, by the way, I'm gay. Or, oh, your, your mom's like breast cancer returns. Right? And maybe you don't have the, the environment controlled. Maybe I can do a talk about environment. All right, so it's not gone forever. It's gone for now. And if you know that it's gone for now, you're going to more likely appreciate it. Amen? Come on. You're going to more likely appreciate this new version of you, especially when you know your hunger will return. Now work backwards. If your hunger is going to return, don't work out hard because going to the gym makes you hungry. You cannot work off a bad diet. And every time you go to the gym, they're pushing food and products and stuff on you that's making you make food choices. It's going to bulk you up. And you're going to gain weight, which is the opposite of what you think it's doing because it's not good for weight loss. You're going to actually gain weight if you're going to the gym. And it will drive you crazy because... You'll think you're on a plateau. No, stop going to the gym and your plateau will break. Stop snacking. But I have to snack because I'm at the gym. Stop snacking because you can't be trusted with a healthy snack. You can't make a healthy snack decision. Stick to the Dr. V diet. Dr. V, drvdiet.com. Get my diet. It's free. drvdiet.com. Stop snacking. Let me write that down. www.drvdiet.com. Okay. Stop snacking. You can't be trusted with snacking, right? If you start snacking, it will end your honeymoon period because you didn't appreciate it enough because you were fed all these lies. Oh my God, my surgeon. I'm the best surgeon. He's so good. This weight's just melting off. It's so easy. I can only eat a few bites. Yay. Look at me go. I'm to size 10. You don't appreciate the honeymoon period because the honeymoon period is for the mind games, mind stuff. And you'll stay in the honeymoon period longer if you do not chase restriction. Get very disciplined. Eat only what you're supposed to eat. Small amounts. Take, you keep using your little baby spoons. Keep, I have a video about how you're supposed to actually eat. Not what you're supposed to eat. The steps of actually eating after surgery, right? Eat slowly. Chew your food. Sit on your hands. Measure out your food. Eat on small plates. All that sort of stuff keeps you disciplined to not chase restriction because once your restriction goes, stretch receptors happen. That correlates with the hunger returning around the same fucking time you guys are hitting the gym. And it turns out your husband's gay. It all hits you. Amen? Come on now. Come on. Hey, I love you husbands. You know, I'm just making a point. Right? So these are the pitfalls that are very common that I see happening in the weight loss surgery community. And my, my ask for you guys is this. I'm asking that you help me change the conversation in the weight loss community. Change, not just the weight loss surgery community, the entire weight loss com uh, community. If you're trying to lose weight, if you have a friend, a family, a sister, a relative, and, and they haven't had weight loss surgery, but they want to lose weight, turn them on to me. Turn, tell them to follow me on Facebook. Tell them to watch my YouTube videos because the information that is out there in the dieting world is just fucking wrong. Tell, have the courage to tell your dietitians about me. Have the gumption to tell your surgeon about me. Let me do the arguing for you. Don't feel bad. Don't feel like it's him versus me. No, no, no. It's We have to work together to change the conversation. Otherwise, we are experiencing at least a 30 to 33% weight regain or inadequate weight loss after weight loss surgery. One in three people are regaining all or most of their weight. One in three after weight loss surgery. Did your surgeon tell you that? Fuck no, he didn't. Because if he had, you probably wouldn't have done the surgery. So 
my life here was not to be a surgeon. And a lot of y'all wondering why I left surgery. It was nothing like sneaky or deceptive. My dreams just outgrew the OR. I want to help the world. I want to leave a big legacy. I asked you this last time and I'll ask you again. Who's the most famous doctor on the planet right now? Who do you think is the most famous doctor on the planet right now? The answer is Dr. Oz. Problem is, think about this. With his TV show, popularity, all the money he's made, when Dr. Oz dies, will he be remembered? I don't think he will. Why not? Because he hasn't done anything to deserve it. He hasn't changed any sort of paradigms. He hasn't really shifted consciousness. I was born on this planet to shift the consciousness, to end all of this suffering, all this bullshit, all this crap that we've been doing to each other for no good reason. That's my ask for you. If you're still watching this, help me elevate this consciousness. All right. I love you very much. I'll see you next time. Uh, you know, weight regain is an issue. Go to weight... Even if you haven't regained weight, regaincourse.com, weightregaincourse.com is 26 videos, professionally shot. It's not like this. I, I hired a whole camera crew. It's got downloads. It's got quizzes. It's got an action plan of what to do. Like do this when you start to regain weight. Okay. I, have, I give you an actual action plan of what to do, of what to do. Now, why am I telling you about this? I have it on a special now at 297. Okay? Normally, I, normally this, it's like 800 bucks. So I got it on for 300. Now, I know for some of y'all that's hard. And what I'm offering you is this, $99 times three months. $99 a month times three, three months. Because if you can't afford a hundred, a Benjamin, one hundred dollars to your own health, to stop the weight regain, to keep the diabetes from coming back, I can't help you, man. You're not part of my tribe. Now, here's why I'm telling you about this. I have a 30-day money-back guarantee. I promise you. You can watch all the videos. Watch all the videos. And at 30 days, if you're like Dr. Vong, uh, I want my money back. I won't, I won't bad an eye. I will not bother you. I will not say, oh, but didn't you do it? You didn't. Like, Dr. Vong, something came up. I just want my money back. Okay. So really, if you have 30 days, you really could get this whole course for free. Now, how valuable would that be to you? How valuable? Put a one in the comment section if that would be super valuable for you to be able to learn what to do. These are not videos on YouTube. You cannot find them anywhere. They're 26 videos laid out. They cover every surgery. They cover bypass, sleeve, lap band revisions, duodenal switches, and the new newer surgery called the mini gastric bypass you guys will start hearing about. But it covers all the surgeries, gives you an action plan. You can get it all for free if you ask for your money back. Now, I'm so sure about that, you're not going to want your money back. You're going to see the quality of this video course, how valuable it is, and you'll be like, I want to keep this forever to keep going back and referencing it. Okay. Now, why am I telling you this? I think I'm going to take away the 30-day money-back guarantee for this course. Because I know the shit's good. I know it works. My stuff works. Your surgeon stuff. Man, if, you're, if, you're, if what your surgeon's telling you, what your dietitians are telling you work, why are you watching me? Why do you watch my YouTube videos? Why are you following me? Clearly, it doesn't work for them. But it works for me. It works for my patients. I've got great results. Totally amazing. Okay? That's it for the pitch. Hi, check Dr. Vong here. If you loved that video, I hope you will check out Velocity2020.com. I want to meet you in person. This is my big annual conference in Vegas. It's amazing. It's not just about weight loss surgery, but it's about taking your life up to the next level. You're going to meet the best people, the best speakers, the best audience possible. You're going to really take your life up to the next level. 2020 is all about vision, clarity, and focus. We're going to show you how to find your vision, what you really want to do with your life, 
get crystal clear clarity and then find your laser focus to do what you need to do to have the amazing life that you deserve hope to see you next